So the other day, I asked one of my reviewer friends, Jeff from SoCal Sense, if you guys haven't followed him, make sure to do that, if he could send me a decant of the new Elysium O Intense, which we're going to be reviewing today. I knew he had a bottle and it wasn't released yet, so I wanted to test it out before I could actually buy a bottle to see, I mean, obviously, smart way to do it. And so he sent me that, which we're going to be reviewing today, as well as a few Louis Vuittons, uh, the brand new one, Louis Vuitton Pacific Chill, um, and a couple other things that I'm going to be reviewing over the next few weeks. So today, that's what we're going to be doing. And I'm also going to compare the new Elysium O Intense to the Elysium Parfum Cologne that I already own, let you guys know what the differences are, if there's any longevity, stuff like that. But Today is going to be my first impression, so I might not have all that information. So today, again, Elysium O Intense is on the menu. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button, that you get the notifications going so that we can get into this video. So without further ado, let's get it. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Randy, you guys all know that. Today we are getting into a 2023 brand new niche release by the House of Roja Parfums. Um, th this was a very anticipated release um, as soon as it was announced and people believed it, including myself. A lot of people saw this post on Facebook about three months ago where it was just a bottle. Nobody confirmed it, and a lot of people thought it was just kind of like a fragcom hoax um, where they made the bottle and then just changed the color because that's kind of what it looked like. Not to mention that the Elysium O Intense, it's like, why do you need an intense version of something that already has a parfum? That is a longer lasting, smoother, um, better projecting version of the original already. So why do you need that? That to me actually made sense. And so I kind of went along with it. Then about a month after that, we finally got word from Roja themselves that they were releasing both Isola Blue, um, which is that coconut fragrance that they were releasing as a re-release of oligarch um with a twist and i haven't tried that yet and then they were also releasing the o intense um one of my friends jeff from socal sense got it from the roja and i asked him if he could send me a decant which he did and we got here just sprayed it right here and so i mean literally like 10 seconds ago and the only thing I know about this fragrance is that it had rhubarb in it because I heard a bunch of people talking about rhubarb. Um, I posted it on my channel, but there were so many notes that I didn't even look through it. Um, I honestly wasn't overhyped with it because it was coming out for $300 and I don't buy $300 fragrances. But my job today is to let you guys know in comparison to the most popular one from the line, because the Parfum, even though that one smells better and is a better fragrance, you can't find that for a really good price. This one you can find usually around 160, 170, and I love it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you, is this worth it against the original Parfum Cologne? Is it worth the $300 retail price? Is it worth it where you can keep this until that one, the new one drops in price, and then you can pick it up on discounters? Because that will happen. Or is it not worth it at all? Well, as soon as you spray it on, the rhubarb is front and center, and the fragrance is not the same as the Parfum Cologne, which a lot of people, including myself, thought it could be. Uh, we honestly didn't know what to expect. But there were so many notes you never know with Roja. The original Parfum Cologne is a citrus medley. It's that grapefruit, orange, lemon, lime, bergamot it's every kind of citrus kind of just mix, mixed up into a blender then you get to the dry down you get a little bit of a floral tone you also get some vanilla some ambergris um, sweetens it up a bit also gets a little bit of an earthiness and, and some woods some cedar in there as well really really nice fragrance really really bright really fresh really clean this one it does have the undertone of the parfum cologne you can smell the Parfum Cologne is straight underneath the fragrance. It's kind of as a base of the fragrance for this with a twist on top of it. Uh, I would still say it's about 60% close to the original Parfum Cologne, 
while doing its own thing, which is what you would expect from a flanker from a line. It does have that DNA front and center, so if you're still looking for that bright citrus medley, it is in there, it's right down in the bottom, sitting there underneath that rhubarb. A little bit of a greenness underneath it as well. Yeah, this is good, man. It's definitely musky. I mean, I already expected it to be that. Um, it's super musky. Um, not like animalic or anything like that. It's just, it's a nice supporting musk underneath it to make the fragrance push more. You can tell that this fragrance is pushing out a lot heavier than the Parfum Cologne. Um, even more than the, the Parfum. It is pushing out, I'd say above average at least. Uh, it's really, really, really nice. So the rhubarb is, I said that in Sun Drunk from Imaginary Authors that the rhubarb was the most realistic rhubarb that I've ever smelled. Well, now this has changed that. This is the most realistic rhubarb I've ever smelled, which doesn't surprise me from Roja. They always use those uh, raw materials whenever they can, and this is the most realistic rhubarb note that I've ever smelled. Mix that together so you have rhubarb, a little bit of a green edge underneath it and almost like a florally spice and then underneath that again you have that citrus medley with some musk that you get from the original one it's fresh it's clean it's fruity you still have a little bit of that apple mixture in there um i'm guessing from the original one um it's kind of just like a l higher projecting version of the original with a fruit fruitiness over top of it a unique fruitiness a little bit of spice florals and green tones it's really nice i really like it um as far as going into the dry down i honestly don't know much about it um we are in the first impression stage at this point in time so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take about a half hour 45 minutes i'm gonna let it sit on my arm See if we get anything different that I can tell you about now. If not, we'll wait to uh, my full review, obviously. But with that said, I'll be right back. All right, everyone. So we are back with the dry down of Elysium O Intense in comparison to the Parfum Cologne. Uh, so what do I think about it? We are at 45 minutes because it only started to fully change around 35 minutes. Um, as far as the Parfum Cologne, again, you get to the dry down. The citrus medley starts to dissipate. You get some nice cedar in there mixed together with a little bit of ambergris, some vanilla. It's really nice. It has a little bit of a sweetness to it. I really enjoy it. Again, that's one of my favorite fragrances. Outside of the longevity factor, which I don't really care. If a fragrance gets me two to, two to three hours, I'm fine with it. But that one... The apart from cologne, if I spray it heavy and I spray it on clothes, I can get six hours or so. So I really don't mind it. I know a lot of people have issues with it, but if there was one drawback from it, it would be longevity if I had to say that, but I don't really care. So I give that fragrance like a nine and a half. It's one of my favorites. As far as the O Intense, is it better than the apart from cologne? I don't know that. I don't think so. I would probably give it at this point in time like an 8.5. It's still a really, really good fragrance. But once I got to the dry down, so the way that it worked is for the first like 15 minutes, um, like I said, it's that rhubarb, it's fruity over top of this kind of like minty herbaceousness underneath it. Um, not too minty or anything like that. It just has like this green herbaceousness. Um, and then have underneath that you have that kind of citrus medley that you get from the DNA of the original. At about 15 minutes, it's the only part of the fragrance that I said, wow, this is getting really close to the original uh, Parfum Cologne because the rhubarb starts to dissipate. When it does that, you can start to notice that DNA a lot more, but it only lays there for about five to 10 minutes where it's very close to the Parfum Cologne. Once we start to get through that mid into the dry down, uh, that is where it starts to turn into a different fragrance almost altogether. It's more of a dry woods musk with this fruitiness encapsulating it and then a little bit of a spicy floral underneath. That is where I'm at at 45 minutes right now. Um, so yeah, it's like this. I, I had I went and looked at the note breakdown real quick just to see what all they have in there. And while there is like a bunch of florals like rose and whatever, it doesn't really come off as one thing or another. Uh, the fragrance together at the dry down right now that rhubarb dissipated and turned almost like it mixed in with the apple and all the rest of the stuff that's in the dna 
and now you just have this fruitiness that's encapsulating this right really nice almost modern dry woods that has a little bit of this florally spice underneath it and then some musk um, that's what the fragrance looks like right now i think it's really nice as far as the projection at this point in time it has got down to about a personal bubble um, at this time with the uh, parfum cologne depending on how much you spray it it's about this much as well it gets closer and closer to the skin so that's one thing that I'm kind of surprised about because it is called the O Intense. For the first like half hour or so, it was projecting very nicely. Um, I would say that this one, if anything, just based on what my guesses are going to be, is that it's probably going to last about an hour longer than the Parfum Cologne. Still is not going to be a longevity beast. For people who are always asking me that question, this is not going to be a performance beast. It's not going to project crazily, but I think it's going to give you a good wear. That's that's my opinion on what I think is going to happen. Um, but overall, the fragrance is really nice. It's fruity, it's fresh, it's clean. Having into a nice woods um, mixed with a little bit of a florally spice and a fruitiness and musk encapsulating the entire fragrance with that DNA just underneath it all. Uh, I think it's really good. I think it is a nice change in uh, pace to the line to add to it, and which I was really nervous about in the first place. Would I pay $300 for it? No. I think that you can wait. Get a decan if you really want to try it. If you already have this or the Parfum, wear that until probably three to six months when you start to see the O Intense on discounters. Then you'll be able to pick it out for like $200, which is $100 off. Even if it's like $225, I would still pick it up for that price. Um, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, as far as that, I, I mean, anything over an 8, I think is definitely worth a pickup. And for this, at least from the opening, the O Intense, I gave an 8.5 out of 10. Um, I still think that the Parfum Cologne is still the best smelling of the three. Uh, while the Parfum is going to be the overall best in the collection, I just don't find the price to be worth it. Uh, with that said, let me know if you guys have tried this, but overall it's a great fragrance and I can't wait to do my full review. Let you guys know, I'll probably do that in about 10 days. But thank you guys so much, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back with another one. Peace out.